Megan Tennant here and I've got another video for you today. Today we're going to be talking epilogues. So first off, what is an epilogue? An epilogue is a portion of the story that comes after the rest of the story. Generally after a period of time that's fairly significant and the period of time can range anywhere from a week to years to centuries. A good example that I'm going to be using throughout this is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, which has an epilogue at the end which takes place, I believe, 19 years after the final battle. So that's a good example of an epilogue. Now first question is, why do people use epilogues? Because this will help you decide whether you need an epilogue or not. The first reason to use an epilogue is to give closure to your readers. And this would be something that comes at the end of a series, so for example in The Hunger Games. And this is very common in dystopias. So The Hunger Games, we get to the end and we bring down the capital and now there's kind of a lawless land. So readers want to know what happens, what did the world become. But we also don't want to sit through a whole book of organizing politics and setting up a new government and all of that stuff. So in The Hunger Games we have the epilogue and it jumps forward a set amount of years and we see that the world is organized, that The Hunger Games has been done away with. Essentially we see that the world has overcome everything that they went through and that things are getting put into place again. So it gives the readers closure. So even though the book itself ends on kind of a more violent note and everything's kind of up in the air, we get that bit at the end that tells us that the series is over and things have come together and all of the loose ends are tied and we can move on with our lives. Another reason that authors use epilogues is to answer unanswered questions. You have to be a little careful with this because you don't want to abuse it. If you can answer the questions without using an epilogue, you should, but I think there are some times where authors have used this to maybe go and show a different point of view to fill in kind of blanks that we couldn't get through our MC's point of view. I don't have any examples off the top of my head of this, I haven't really seen it, so if you have some good examples, comment them down below, I would love to check them out. But essentially this is kind of another way to give closure by answering questions that you weren't able to answer throughout the story. Some authors use epilogues as teasers, especially if you have more books coming in the series, it's a good way to kind of give people a taste of what's to come. But another alternative to this is some authors just include samples of their coming chapters at the end of the book, but that only really works for reprints. So be careful with using this one, but just know that this is a reason that some authors use epilogues and it is an option if you choose to want to go that route. Another reason that authors choose to use epilogues is happy endings. So if your book ends in a huge climactic battle and people die and you want to still give your readers a happy ending but at the same time your MC has to mourn the loss of these characters, you, there's, there's difficult to do. I faced this issue with Lethia. And Harry Potter is a perfect example of this. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. We have the final battle of Hogwarts and there's all these deaths and we can't have that instantly become a happy ending because our characters that survive need to overcome all of this loss and they can't be happy until they've overcome that. So the way to solve this is to jump forward a chunk of time. We could have done with just a small jump, but uh, J.K. Rowling made the, I think, good decision to jump 19 years so we could see the full range of recovery that the Wizarding World underwent. So this goes back to the closure thing in which we get closure for the universe because we see that they've moved forward and recovered. The final reason that I found that authors use epilogues, and this one is not as common, but a good reason to use an epilogue is if your POV character dies. So if you have multiple POVs, you don't need to do this, but if you have a single POV character and they die in the final battle, then you have to give your readers some closure. You can't just end it at their death and we don't know what happens to the universe. We don't know if things worked out. So a good way to solve this is doing an epilogue and you jump to someone else's POV for just the epilogue and it's not as jarring because it's in its own little unit at the end of the book. So reading it from someone else's POV isn't as 
strange for the reader who's been in this other character's mind for the whole series. Things to keep in mind when writing an epilogue. First is length. If you feel like you need a whole novella to contain your epilogue, then you might be better off just writing a novella that comes after your series. You should try to aim for at maximum the length of your longest chapter in your book, and if your longest chapter is really long, then probably even less. I would say maximum of 20 pages because really this is just to give people closure. They don't want to read a whole book at the end of your book, they just want all of the loose ends tied up. So. Try to summarize this as much as possible, but also don't just do a summary at the end of your book. You don't want this to read like just another synopsis that tells people what happened. So the best way to do this is to capture a scene, and in that scene we're able to glimpse what the world has become. So good examples of this are Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. At the end we have the scene at the train station, and from that one scene we're able to get all of these answers to these questions that give us closure in this series and the universe. And also, along with that, keep it interesting. You are still hooking your reader. For the most part, if someone's stuck with your books this long, they're gonna finish the epilogue, but people do sometimes skip the epilogues, so keep their attention, make it interesting. Write this as if it were a regular scene in your book, but don't introduce any new things, with the exception of maybe children of the main characters, you should not be introducing any new characters. You shouldn't be introducing new locations. If it happens in a location that wasn't mentioned before, just kind of gloss over the location. You don't need to describe what it all looks like because we don't really care because the series is over and we just want closure, really. So don't introduce any new topics. If you don't plan on continuing your series after this epilogue, do not include any teasers in your epilogue because that's just kind of pointless and mean. Again, you're trying to give people closure, so throwing in unanswered questions is going to just annoy them. Unless you are planning more books in the series, or maybe novellas, and then it's still kind of dangerous waters, but then if you have a reason to include these teasers, you can think about adding them. But if it's the end of the series, no unanswered questions left at the end that got brought up in your epilogue. There's no reason to do that. As unrealistic as it might be, we don't want to give the readers whiplash, so you don't want... You need to think about what's happened in the world from the last chapter to the epilogue, but you can't really show your characters with all of these new character developments that came from things that happened to them in that span that the reader didn't see. We want to try to stay true to the character that the reader last knew and the character that would have come from the events that the reader last saw because, again, this is going to be a short epilogue. We don't have the time to tell them that, oh, in between the last chapter you saw and this new chapter, all of this other adventure happened and it changed the character in this way and now he's this person. The reader doesn't really care. so. Take what the character was in that last chapter, consider how that last chapter and the events of your series would have affected that character, and then portray him or her that way, because we don't want to give the readers whiplash. Whether or not you should do an epilogue is wholly dependent on your book and your series, and it includes factors beyond my control, so I can't tell you whether you should or shouldn't. You should just know that it is something you should think through. You should never default to including an epilogue or default to not including an epilogue. It is something that you have to consciously decide with each book and each series. If in doubt, you could always ask beta readers, have them read the book without the epilogue, and then afterwards show them the epilogue and ask them if it added to it or if it wasn't really necessary. And from there you can decide. But this is something that you have to decide on a per book, per series basis. and. It's something that you have to figure out for yourself. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. You can give me a like, too. If you really liked this video, you can give it a share on your favorite social media site. And I will see you guys in the next video.